Hello everyone, welcome to the 6th video on the Snow Pro Core Certification Series. In this video, we are going to discuss about the user defined functions, external functions and stored procedures. The user defined function is a function that you define so you can call it from the SQL. The UDF logic typically extends or enhances SQL with the functionality that SQL doesn't have or doesn't do it well. UDF also gives you the way to encapsulate the functionality so you can call it repetitively from multiple places inside the code. The main advantage of using the user defined function is the third point which we are discussing here. Say I want to do a work in a repetitive way instead of writing the same lines of code again and again I can put it inside a function and I can call that function within the SQL. So the supported language for user defined functions are Java, JavaScript, Python, Scala, Scala where the UDTFs are not supported and then the snowflake scripting in the form of the SQL. There are two different user defined functions there. One is the scalar function which we used to call it as UDF which returns only one output row for each input row. When it comes to the UDTF which is the tabular function will return a tabular value for each input row. That is the difference between scalar and the tabular function. When it comes to the Programming, this is all about uh, programming here. So we need to see how a function can be written. This is a very simple function which is written in the language of Python. So it takes an integer as the input. It returns an integer as the output. The language is Python. The runtime is 3.8. So it simply what it does, it takes i as input and it will add 1 to i and it will return it out. So when I call a function like this using select add 1 3 it will return me the output of 4 as simple as it is. This is a scalar function which takes one input and it will return one output. You can see it in the right side of the screen. This is how we can call an UDTF which is the tabular function which returns the table as the output. If you can see the create or replace function is similar. It returns the table as the output which contains the input item basket item SK and the number of baskets. So these are all the set of results which can be returned as the part of the output of this UDTF. It can be called in the similar way within the SQL select star from table. We can call the same get market basket function which is the UDTF function. Moving on we are going to discuss about the another form of the function which we call it as the external functions. The name itself will be very evident. So far we saw external tables, external stages. Now we are going to discuss about the external function. The external function calls the code that is executed outside of Snowflake. So for this we need to understand some two to three key terminologies. This is the diagram which I got from the Snowflake document which is very very helpful for our understanding. The remotely executed code is known as the remote service. In this case if you can see this is the remote function which is going to be executed. As it is remote it is going to be AWS Lambda function or Azure functions or GCP functions. Then the information is sent to the remote service is relayed through a proxy service. In this place if you can see the HTTPS proxy service is the proxy which which will act as the proxy between the external function and the remote service. And the another key factor is the API integration which is the place where Snowflake stores the security related information of the external function. So the external function supports the same languages which is supported by the typical user defined functions. Apart from that it will also support Go and Shehash. This is the added languages on which you can write the external 
external functions so there are some limitations for external functions it must be a scalar function we already know what is a scalar function it will take one input and it will return only one output as well it cannot be shared via the data sharing mechanism the maximum response which we can get out of the external function is 10 megabytes alone so to understand the picture in a more detailed way our client program in this case it is going to be our snowflake snow site web ui where we will fire this query select my external function from table one this will call the external function which is integrated with the api integration where all the security related information is stored that it will pass the information to the proxy service via the gateway and then it will be as discussed as aws lambda or azure functions or gcp function it will take the result out and then it will be pushed back to our client program now we are going to see the examples of external functions in the form of the small code snippets create or replace external function my external function it takes string as the input uh, typically the string call as the input which will be in where care it returns the variant as the output and this is the api integration which it is going to use as the proxy service of https xyz whatever and then you can see the api integration as we discussed earlier is the way by which we will be providing the security information for the external function in this case it is going to be aws so the aws api gateway is going to be used as the proxy service and then the aws lambda function is going to be called as the remote service so the api provider will be api gateway and the role which provides the access to the lambda function and everything is mentioned here and then the allowed prefixes for the specific aws usage is mentioned here now you can see the external function is not only limited to the select part of the query that is very important to know you can see the starting one select my external function column one comma column two from table one this is typically used it will call this function and it will return the typical output which we get from the uh, result of the function but you can see the same external function can be used as the filter condition as well here you can see the external con function can be used with the view as well so this is not specific to the select part of it it can be used across the multiple places like filter conditions and also on the views moving on we are going to discuss about the stored procedures within the snowflake it contains the logic that you write so you can call it from sql more or less same as the user defined function fine we will try to see logic typically performs database operations by executing sql st statements this is also more or less same as the udfs dynamically create and execute sql statements automate a task that requests multiple sql statements and it performed frequently all these statements which is mentioned over here are more or less similar to the user defined functions we will see what is the difference between the stored procedures and user defined functions so the languages which are used are typically java python and scala using the snowpark api we already saw what is the snowpark what are all the various snowpark apis which are already available and then we can write the stored procedures using the javascript as well and finally there is an option to write it in the sql naturally using the snow Snowflake scripting. Now here you are seeing the sample code for the stored procedure. Here we are creating the stored procedure in the name of myproc from table string to table string count of integer. It is going to take three inputs and then it is going to run in Python and typically this is the 3.8 version where it is taking it and then it is saving it, the saving the information to a table. This is a typical PySpark. Uh, in the sense it is in snow park actually so this from table dot limit dot count write save as table these are all not sql statements these are all spark statements now utilizing the snow park api for python we are firing the typical spark against the snowflake so when you call the myproc function using the call when you see in the udf it is called within the sql here there is a specific call function to call the stored procedures so it will give the table a and it will give the table b and phi as the another one so simply what it does it will take the table a and then it will write it will take the phi records from table a and it will write those phi records into table b that is what this stored procedure is going to do 
now we we are going to discuss about very very important thing what is the difference between stored procedures and udf so the udf typically is used to, to calculate and return a value a function always returns a value explicitly by specifying an expression but when it comes to the stored procedure it is always used to perform administrative operations by executing sql statements you need a function that can be called as the part of the sql statement and that must that must return a value that will be used in the statement you try to understand the statement which is mentioned here this is very very important and here you can see you need to perform a ddl or dml operations on the database for that specific use case we can very well utilize the stored procedure you need to perform simple Simple SQL queries only using the Stellar statements for UDF, but here you can perform the DML statements like update. All the other DML operations can be performed using the stored procedures. This tabular column will comes very handy for the understanding point of view. If you see, must return a value. The UDF must have to return a value, but stored procedure need not. It is an optional one for stored procedure. The returned values are directly usable in. sql that is the usage of udf but that is not needed for stored procedure called in the context of another statement you can call an udf in the context of another statement but that cannot be done on the stored procedure multiple calls within one statement is possible for udf that is not possible for stored procedure and as we already discussed the ddl and dml statements are possible only with the stored procedures not with the user defined functions this snowflake documentation is very very important from the exam point of view and also from the understanding point of view this provides the detailed comparison between stored procedures and user defined functions before ending this video i just wanted to show some of these things uh, these are all the snowflake documentation i will be providing the links for this documentations as the part of the description of this video for the user defined functions you can see all the user defined functions informations are available in here what are all the languages which are supported how we can write the user defined functions and everything when it comes to the external functions the same pattern is discussed we already saw this diagram why it is useful how we can create what are all the various proxy services which you can utilize and what are all the remote services which we can utilize and the api integration part and everything and moving on to the stored procedures how we can create a stored procedure and what are all the languages by which we can create the stored procedure all this information is available to us and um, this is the one which i am mentioning earlier the difference between the stored procedure and user defined function when it is used what is the specific purpose when we can And create a stored procedure or an udf what are all the supported languages this is very very important you can see udf returns a value stored procedure need not all these things are mentioned udf returns values which are directly usable in sql we already saw this information in the form of a tabular format but glimpsing through this documentation is also very very important for you to understand the concepts well with this we come to the end of this video i hope this video has been informative for you please do write lot of comments by doing so i can enhance the contents of my videos as well thank you very much for watching this video